now, for example, the guys, very selfishly, we are all working and they just sit down and have their lunch. If I sit down in a minute and have a big lunch, big lunch, then maybe a big Enjoy pudding, lunch. a big dessert. <laughs> looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, there's me standing here big time. In my box, this is my hook links. Yeah, you see I have black and I have brown and I have one green. This one green is really important for me. This is my chod link material, but I just have one breaking strain. We offer three breaking strains, Quarter offer three breaking strains, Fox offer three breaking strains, but for me, I only need one. And that is because the purpose of this is to create a stiff hinge rig or a chod rig. This is the two rigs to create it with. The reason I use this, forget 30 pounds. It means nothing, yeah? You cannot break 30 pounds. If you tie a good knot, no carp in the world will break a 30 pound knot. So I'm not buying it for 30 pounds. We put it on there because the fishermen, they know pounds, yeah? I, I want the 20 pound version, I want the 15 pound version. What I want is that there, 0 0.55. It is the thickness, yeah? And it's not thick because strong, it's thick because when I create the curve in the rig, the thicker the material, the stronger the curve will stay there. So if I'm sending it on a big cast, it will hold its curve all the way out there, all the way down till it's fishing. So this is one hook link material. Everything else, gravel or silt. In here you have Klingon leader. It is the only leader material I use, yeah? Many years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I only fished lead core. Lead core, lead core, lead core, lead core. And lead core was great, you know? Lead core, when you create the leader, it goes bang, like this on the bottom. So it's very, very heavy, which means you have good concealment. If, if the bottom is flat, yeah? You think really of any situation you fish in, whether it be clay or chalk or gravel or silt, is never flat. Yeah? And even if you fish in the silt, and it is flat silt like this, when your lead goes into it, yeah, because you have a stiff material here, he sticks back up like this. If you take gravel, for example, on the gravel bottom, there will be some big bits of gravel, some small bits of gravel, different types of gravel, maybe depressions in the gravel, maybe twigs, maybe branches. With the lead core, what you have, if you just have one small stone like this, you have this situation. Yeah, where it sits up off the bottom like this. If you exaggerate that more, and maybe say there is a big stone there on the bottom, now you have this situation here like this. You have very poor presentation. So only fishing now with the Klingon leader because I have 100% supple material which will follow the contours significantly better. His splice is easier, it's just as strong. So this is the leader material. And again, I have this in silt and gravel. The only other product I have really is Armlink. I bring this with me for this demonstration only. I very, very, very rarely will fish with this, very rarely. The only time I will fish with a coated hook link, like skin link, is if I'm casting a long way and it is windy and usually in the night time. In the daytime, I can cast even in the wind and my eyesight is good, I can watch the rig travel through the sky and I can see that it's not whipping up like this. So as long as I'm casting and watching everything and I see the bait behind and everything traveling perfectly, it is okay. In the nighttime, especially on a crosswind like this, yeah, I cannot see, it's impossible. So sometimes I will use a coated braid just to be very confident in my mind the rig has not done this on the cast. The reason I don't use this is exactly the same as the lead core situation. You have coated braid from Nash, Skin Link, great product. You have hybrid from Corda or Cortex from Fox or ESP Striptease, whatever. Every brand sells a product like this. The benefit of it is you can create a rig like this and you can strip a section back. So at your hook, you can create a hinge element, yeah, for flexibility of the, the bait, uh, the hook moving in the fish's mouth. The problem with this is exactly the same situation again. You have this. Yeah? It is not supple to follow the contours at the bottom. So I exclusively fish with arm link. Now, if you ask 100 fishermen what hook link material they use, 99 or 100 will say, yeah, coated braid. 
I fish with a coated braid, I fish with a coated braid, or lots of them fish with fluorocarbon. I also will use fluorocarbon, but only in very unique situations when the water is tap clear. Yeah, when the, when the water is crystal clear and you see everything, then of course I have to make a sacrifice and I fish with the fluorocarbon. But it's only in that situation. If the water is even a little bit coloured, forget the fluorocarbon and I only use the armor link. Why this is really, really special is one, if I take it off the spool like this, and I put it in my hand like this, I can screw it up into a ball like that. It's not Christ and Supernova, it's not Silkworm, it's not the, the, the true supple braid, but it's supple enough to be able to roll it into a ball in my hands. If I take it off the spool like this, the fan is <laughs> yeah, you see he's holding himself like this. So there is an element of rigidity in it. Yeah, there is a waxy coating around it, which means when I am casting it, it's not so supple, it's spinning up like this. But most importantly, it will follow what is fished over. Yeah, so it's much more supple. Inside this product, it's very boring as well. Fishermen don't just want a, a boring braid. They want a coated braid and they want to strip bits back. But this one here is really exciting. If I... I remove this coating it is not a plastic coating it's fabric fibers woven mm -hmm. fibers like this and inside here you have this thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny fibers like this and you can see they are white this is pure Kevlar and it is impossible to change the colour of Kevlar. You can only have it in white. You can, no matter how much dye you put into it, it will not absorb it inside. So if, if a company or, or another fisherman say, ah oh, yeah, I fish with a Kevlar braid, it's very easy for testing because you simply look at the colour. If it's pure white, then 99% it is pure Kevlar. Kevlar is what they make the, the vest with, the mm -hmm. bulletproof vest. This is how strong it is. What it means is, I can fish this in Almost every situation, if there is chains coming from a boat, if there is mussels all over the bottom, if there is trees, if there is branches, and there is nothing in this tackle shop that gives me more chance of not being cut off. Nothing. This one here, ting, Gorda, ting, Fox, ting, not this. Yes, okay, in very bad situations it will cut, but it's the, the strongest and most abrasion resistant. The kind of fishing I do, I've done it long enough now to realize that the carp love the safest places. They love it underneath the boats, inside the structures, in the forests, in the weed. This is their happy place. This is where they feel most safe. And as a fisherman, I want to catch them. And with this, I'm more than happy to put my rig into these situations and feel very confident that even in a big, big fight, I'm not going to be cut off. Normally, when I do this demonstration, I have one tank. And the tank is like this high and inside the tank is concrete, oh, really? concrete. And inside the concrete, I put slate and stone and mussel shells. And I honestly can take this now in, in my demonstration tank and I can rub it over everything and you cannot cut it. Yeah, it will do this. Look, no damage. And I'm not even onto the Kevlar yet. Yeah. Still no damage, not onto the Kevlar yet. When you get onto the Kevlar, this is the really strong bit. I take it with the scissors. Yeah, now I've broke the coat in, but now I'm onto the Kevlar. Really strong, like the strongest, again. So imagine now you're playing a fish and he's just touching the odd muscle, very, very strong. So this is my hook link material and I use it for everything. The two rigs I will show you, 
The first one is a slip D. It's so, so simple to tie, and this is the reason I use it, because it doesn't yeah, have, it doesn't have uh, this swivel and all this piece moving. It's just very simple. You take a length of the braid, you create one loop, like this. Yeah, just create a loop. Take your hook. For me, always a twister. Yeah, like this because he has the straight point. I really like this straight point. And then you have here a 90 degree, yeah? 90 degree bend. You have another 90 degree bend. What happens with this hook, instead of a, like a, a curved hook, a fang X or a quarter curve or... When your fish picks the rig up, the fish is pricked, dumb, like this sucking, blowing, shaking his head, yeah? He moves off, he creates tension on the leader and on the main line, dee 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 yeah? That tension will take it past the point, round the first bend, yeah? And then, now by this point, I'm picking the rod up and exerting the final bit of pressure onto it, which will drive it onto this bit here, like this, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, when I play the carp and I'm drilling him and the fish is playing like this, I am pulling on a straight piece of metal, yeah? Unlike a normal hook, like a claw or a, or a fang X, which has a, a much more rounded bend, you're playing the fish on the bend of the hook. So it's a very, very unique situation. But if you were in the big, big, big fights, yeah, with a big fish, it is more likely that a round hook will start to open up than this. If I pull really hard on a straight, I can't open anything. Yeah, the flesh is all embedded inside the, the fish's mouth. So this is why I, I love this hook, the twister. You take the hook, take your loop, and then simply pass the loop through the eye. Yeah, I'm on plastic metal. Put the loop through there like this then take the end of the loop and pass it over the bend of the hook like this this creates the d section yeah then i can set the length of it i don't want it to be too small yeah so i have almost zero movement i don't want it to be too long where it can come all the way off the bend of the hook i want to maximize it like this to right to the very end yeah so it cannot come off now impossible but i get the full benefit of the blowback yeah set that like that i then wrap just knotless knot one two three four five six like this, I go over one, one, two times, like this. And now I'm ready to pass the remainder of the rig down through the eye to create the knotless knot. Before doing that, to make my life a little bit easier, I remove the tag end, so this piece here, which I do not need, by using a needle and pulling it out of the way. This gives me even more space to thread this one back through. Pull it tight. Pull it really tight. I can now cut this off, don't need it. And that is you're not let's not. Yeah? Then I take one kicker. Like this. Preformed. All done for you in a pack. Remove a small bit. Like that. Take my needle. Pop it on here. Wet the I have the hook, slide this on to create my kicker. It is the kicker, this kicker element here, that when the fish sucks it in and they move left or right or up and down, 
they put tension on the hook link and it is that which makes it turn over like this. It is the kicker which makes the hook in, in the fishy's round turn like that to hopefully then catch somewhere. So that is finished. To finish the rig off, I decide my length. I create a loop again, two times. It is one, two, simple. Pull it down, but make it big. Wet it. Finish the that is the finished rig. I take uncultured hook bait. 